enjoy this next team that we're going to be watching. We talked about it earlier. They are the number one seed in this tournament for a reason. But it's going to be dead beat, led by their captain, Power. And, uh, and uh, I mean, t talk. You, you've played with them. You've had you've been on teams with them, Hitzel. So just tell us what makes all these players so good individually. Yeah, right. Because uh, it, it's actually kind of funny because a lot of these play. Uh, if you actually dial back the clock, um, and look at these players, uh, you look at Pengit, look at Power, Hexen, and Tim. I think Tim was the only one that was like an all star at the beginning. You know what I mean? I think uh, yeah. when competitive Splatoon first became a thing, Tim was definitely an all-star. Um, Power was on uh, C minus uh, with some other players, um, with like Mario, uh, Chips, etc., who found way more success uh, after they left C minus and, and joined my team. Huh? Uh, <laughs> when, uh, when the game, <laughs> your own horn there, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> when, when the game first started. Uh, but but it's true. You know what I mean? Like Power wasn't um, that kind of name back then. Uh, yeah. Mario was known for being a really good Dynamo. Chips is known for being a really good Octobrush and like a ridiculous sticks player. Like he played E leader with sticks, no motion controls. And for those of you who don't play Splatoon, um, the motion controls in this game are really, really good. Almost as good as mouse and keyboard. They're not mouse and keyboard. I'm not trying to say that, but for a console shooter, it's ridiculous. There's like there's no need for aim assist or anything like that. Um, but if you play sticks, not only do you not get this really fine tuned motion controls, but the the stick controls really aren't. Uh, they're, they're kind of designed as like an afterthought. You're really supposed to be playing motion. Uh, so they're more difficult than normal stick controls. And the fact that he was able to use one of the most aim intensive weapons in the game and do well in tournament. Uh, he got he got like top eight every tournament he played. So like that that was crazy. So, you know, and then you had power who, who's power? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fast forward the clock. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I think that uh, kind of everything that uh, Pangit touches turns the gold. <laughs> and and yeah. Uh, but... yeah. Let's just uh, let's go ahead and watch a uh, power spotlight so you can see some of these snipes. Go, 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 I remember talking to um, to Tic Tac about Power at one point. This is this is a little while back. Uh, Power was, of course, still really good, but he wasn't quite like the the dominating force that he is at this point. He talked about how the one thing that he thought that Power was bringing to the scene that the scene needed was just positioning yourself as a sniper. Uh, some people talk about Power as if he's an aggressive sniper, and I mean, I guess he is by conventional standards, but. He, he picks different angles than you would see a lot of snipers uh, go at, and that can throw teams off, it can throw enemy snipers off, because, you know, sniper battles are all about positioning. And it's I, he's been one of my favorite players to watch, even from the C- minus days. You know, um, I, I kind of feel like Power almost plays Chargers like it's a Splatling. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, no, it's, you're right. Yeah, and the, the thing about Splatlings is Splatlings have to play Chargers all the time. Uh, like we talked before, there's kind of three major types of team comps in this game. There's the uh, the, the slaying based, you know, get kills uh, sniper teams that have a charger. There are the uh, hyper offense, no, sometimes not even any long range weapons, uh, quick response stealth jump, kind of just go in, go in, go in, go in. And then there is the uh, the paint control, uh, you know, splatling, dynamo, etc. And Pretty much uh, the way it ends up working out is the slaying stuff beats the paint control stuff, the paint control stuff beats the hyper offense, and the hyper offense beats uh, the slower paced slaying stuff. And the, the I think one of the reasons that uh, the power is so interesting is those, uh, those splatlings, you know, the, the hard matchup for the splatling is the sniper. So they have to get really, really, really good positioning. They have to be really smart. They have to play like a bad matchup. So you, you tend to, and the, the sniper slaying style is the most popular of the three styles. So they definitely have to learn how to just position themselves so miraculously that they they stand a chance versus the snipers. And Power plays that way, but he does it with a sniper. So he doesn't have to, but he does it anyway. And I think that, <laughs> that going the extra mile is what makes him good. Yeah, it's uh, awesome stuff. And it looks like they are going to be opening up here on Turf War Piranha Pit. So earlier, uh, we were talking about uh, one of the DLC maps being the biggest overall like paint coverage map in the game. Well, now you're going to get to see it. Piranha yep. Pit, 
Uh, two very, very just huge chunks of map that could almost be a map in and of themselves, but it's it's double-sided. Hmm. Uh, there's going to be those small little sections off to the side that I don't think we're going to see a lot of action in. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if both teams painted that and then never paid them any heat for the whole rest of the map. But the one thing that uh, makes this such an interesting map is those ramps. And uh, I, I, talk about those ramps and how silly they are, to put it lightly. Um, well, oh, uh, let's actually yeah. uh, go ahead and sync up now that we sure. started. I'm at 58. I'm at 54, 56. 53. Okay, cool. uh, if you can count for me for one second, nine. Uh, 49, or no, 44, 43, 42, 41. Okay. Yeah, the ramps. Yeah. Um. So, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the download content maps that they added for this game, they tried to like. Uh, in include uh, some kind of uh, different mechanic to the maps. Uh, sometimes they were gimmicks, sometimes they weren't. Uh, the new mechanic that they added to this map is these conveyor belts that you see, right? And these conveyor belts, um, if you paint them, the paint rotates around the conveyor belt. And uh, no matter what happens, the conveyor belts move you. So you have conveyor belts that, it's a very large map, but you have these conveyor belts that just push you into the map right away so to get into the action. You also have these conveyor belts that um, kind of keep uh, players back and then you have these conveyor belts that kind of push players up the top mid where you can take the momentum of the conveyor belts to launch yourself up to higher angles you can use it to get up and over top mid in some game modes and it's it's really really interesting and um it i, I think that uh, when a lot of people think of maps the first thing they think of is like the top mid structure you know what i mean and yeah, this yeah. map's top mid structure is pretty interesting because of those unique ramps so uh expect to see even from power who's sniping expect him to use the ramps to try to uh uh, you know, get a, some good picks on the opponent's spawn, and then use the ramp to just escape quickly. Yeah, sniper and uh, we're seeing, the, yeah, sniper battle there, but we're seeing um, the Bento splatter shot coming out here. So for those, uh, or splatter scope, my apologies. For those unfamiliar with the way it works, the splatter scopes and the e-leaders are the two nice snipe there. Uh, but the splatter scope and the e-leader are the two most commonly played uh, snipers in the game. This power just runs into the last second of the killer whale. <laughs> oh, no. uh, Long story short, one shoots further, one shoots faster. Uh, power will be shooting the one that shoots faster here, charges a little bit quicker. Still a very, very serviceable range for this map and mode. And uh, one of the reasons that a lot of people say that Sniper's one of the, or that Power's one of the top snipers in the game is because he's able to go between the two pretty seamlessly. Yeah, no, he, sometimes he'll be playing and I'll just forget that he changed weapons just simply because he's just playing just as effectively with one or the other and he kind of has like a similar play style. Uh, this weapon in particular, this is one of the DLC weapons, this is a, a quote unquote newer one, although it's been a little bit since they added uh, yeah. new weapons via, uh, via updates, but uh, this Ooh. sniper... Nice. This, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, uh, th this sniper is pretty interesting just simply because uh, it comes with a wall which uh, has been reserved for non-sniper weapons until this update. Uh, so even though it has less range than some of the other weapons, like the Hydra Splatling and the uh, E-Leader and such, it is able to kind of make up for that difference by putting a wall up that protects it from damage. So it can kind of position itself aggressively. So if you have like a this. player yeah. like, yeah, if you have a player like Power has really good positioning, and then on top of that really good positioning, he uses something that gives him even better positioning, he's going to be able to make use of it, which is why, one of the reasons why a lot of players will not use this weapon and go back to other shooters, but power excels with it. Yeah, and uh, one of the other things about this is two whales going off simultaneously. Don't think it hit too much, but uh, they tried it. Um, but uh, it's another great snipe. I know I say that a lot with power, but he's really awesome. Uh, the, the, uh, the Echo Locator, uh, that was something that was strictly um, E-Leader only before, mm -hmm. before this yeah. came out. And uh, that was one thing that I know a lot of snipers loved, especially playing support. Let your teammates see around, uh, but this has allowed a splatter scope, a more aggressive weapon, to uh, do the same thing. As uh, we've been talking a lot about power, let's talk about the match a little bit. Uh, it's pretty. I, I don't know Very if it's actually. Yeah, it's close. It's it's decently <laughs> close here because there is so much to to cover. You know, it's it takes a lot to swing momentum in your favor. Uh, there's of course a good chunk of the map that we're not really seeing because we are watching a sniper here. But uh, it looks like yellow team's kind of trying to throw themselves here on this side, so uh, indicates that maybe there's okay. No, there's a lot of purple on the other side. Yeah, um, no, that uh, that was definitely a, a case of a very very strong last second push, which is what wins you games in turf war. Like that's not let's not forget that uh, the only thing that matters is your percentage at the end of the game, 
And although Deadbeats did kind of uh, have some moments where the enemy were like pushed up on them, game potential had a couple moments where they got uh, people into places like painting a lot and this, that, and the other. Um, when it came down to like the last minute, the last 30 seconds, Deadbeats just tightened their control, tightened their, their control, tightened their control. And unfortunately with that arrow spray um, and a vanilla roller, they weren't really able to, to get out of their spawn. Right, and something that I've noticed here, have we seen a blaster? Like, uh, at was there a Luna? Or a CRB? I, uh, I don't, I mean, I, we haven't seen a lot of blasters today at all. Maybe there was one, maybe two. But why Why do you think that is? I mean, I know that, uh, I know that of course, they're not seen typically as the better painting weapons, but there's a lot to be said for kill power. Uh, speaking of kills, you saw Tim that last game <laughs> kind of steamrolling there. But, uh, yeah, why do you think it is that we're just not seeing any blasters, much blaster play whatsoever? Well, I mean, like we were saying, you do need to change up your team comps in a mode like this. And blasters are really good because they, as long as their teammates paint for them and get paint control for them, the blasters are ridiculously slaying machines, especially the custom range blaster, which is almost like the probably the best not almost, just probably the best slaying weapon. Yeah, in the yeah, game. I would say so. <laughs> and when you go to turf war, where you do have to be able to take advantage of uh, situations where you win in combat, you have to think about it for a second. Now, do you want to use? You, you have to kind of choose what weapons you need to get rid of for painting weapons. So, do you want to get rid of the charger and not have long range presence, or do you want to get rid of the blaster and? not have that close range presence but the thing is other weapons still have close range presence too and paint well and not having a charger completely changes the way the dynamic of your team so because of that i think that a lot of teams choose to drop the blaster instead of dropping the charger and for weapon for teams that weren't dropping the blaster um you saw them kind of using rollers instead of char of uh blasters and i think that that's just either a preference thing or the fact that rollers kind of do paint better when they're not contested so if you have a situation where there's a team wipe your roller just holds down the trigger and just goes yeah uh, <laughs> yeah that's they, they, gonna be able to work and pangit uh who is new <laughs> that is that is his in-game name new, new. he is the the custom range blaster of dead beats and he was the one that who actually said, I'm going to switch over to a good painting weapon. I'm going to pick Dynamo. It's also a one-shot kill weapon, so there's some similarities, some range uh, similarities. But he decided that he's going to go the Dynamo and have power remain the sniper so they can have that really aggressive, uh, just oppressive slaying power from a long-range weapon. And then put Panga on the more turf-based role. Yeah. It's interesting to see Panga switching off the... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm so used to seeing a custom, custom range blaster out of him. Uh, but this comp right now that we're seeing uh, on Walleye Warehouse, this is, I mean, a lot of people look at this as the as a neutral map in the game, sort of like a battlefield in the Smash Bros or something like that. Yeah, I, guess it's, I guess it's Smashville and Smash 4, thinking Melee, but this is a very gonna make versatile the, spread out team. If you're going to make the no items Fox only Final Destination, it's going to be like Splat Zones, Tenetex only, Walleye Warehouse, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so uh, we're, like we're pretty close. Uh, we're, we're pretty close. And uh, one thing I want to mention before we get into the action, I do think that that choice of the 96 gal is a really good choice to Absolutely. replace your custom range blaster because it has the invincibility, it has the mid-range, and it has the slaying power to make up the custom range blaster. But Peng gets going Dynamo, so it right. kind of holds uh, it, it kind of holds the mold of how Dead Beats plays without being bad at turf war. Yeah, and uh, the other thing that's so nice about that is the walls, is we see power here kind of stuck in this little this little alleyway. Um, the walls are so key for holding these. You can really make it difficult, you can make life difficult for anyone who's trying to get in there by throwing up that wall. And conversely, you can, you know, kind of use it to work your way out if you're being pressured. So, uh, yeah, I, I also like the pick. We have another sniper battle. Yeah, especially when his teammate has that 96 gal that also has a wall, right? When you start stacking exactly. walls on a team, it can be really difficult to push on them. Uh, it definitely oh, turn, oh. makes that team just kind of more of a turtle team. Uh, and you saw the wall coming into effect right there. Power was just able to wait and say, all right, once you peek out, I'll just release my trigger and you'll die. And <laughs> now the yeah. Echolator's coming out. You're seeing where all of uh, all the team is stuck right now. That's pretty well back into their spawn, and uh, they're making life difficult. You see the Dynamo just continue to swing up there and power holding down this side. Uh, one, of, one of the things I love to see here is once you hold down both sides, the team kind of has to funnel to the middle, right? Or they can try to load up on one of the sides, but just the mobility to like go from side to side and call out exactly where the team is coming from 
you know, you're seeing whenever one side gets overloaded, you'll see either Hexen or... Uh, <laughs> power, please. Uh, you'll see Hexen or Pengit just move over there, or Tim. And, uh, yeah, again, this is just kind of methodical. You just see them get stuck again and again and again, and they just can't really find any footing. Yeah, this is complete domination. And uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, putting the enemy in their spawn and how they get out, your left side, uh, which would be the enemy's right side, is definitely the way to go. You want to have some people go there, hide behind those walls, get paint over, force anyone camping like power is right now back, and then do a coordinated push through mid and through that side at the same time. Just ignore what would be the enemy's left or, you know, your right, uh, because it's very difficult to actually push back out the map that way. Unfortunately, Game Potential has been doing that. Uh, they've been funneling through the middle, uh, which is uh, kind of a bad call. And honestly, the reason that they were having some success last, last game compared to this game was because on Pit, which is such a huge map that's hard to like actually dominate everything at once, they kept having like that roller or something. <laughs> that was a vintage power moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, they, they, they kept having that roller kind of sneak out and start painting or something like that, or have like the air spray run out and start painting and force dead beats back. That's not really happening on this map. You need to... <laughs> you need a... Uh, no power, no! <laughs> this is starting to get a little bit disrespectful. Power, please! Stop it! Oh my god. <laughs> what is... Uh, power. Uh... Sometimes well, you talk um, about the game, and sometimes you watch the game. Yeah, sometimes, uh, just, I don't have words. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, we're seeing why power is a good sniper. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Actually, um, uh, if maybe, if maybe the, uh, person running the stream and mine could pause for about two seconds, I seem to be a little bit behind. Sure, I can do that. Once again, we see Tim with the 11 and 2 there. Uh, power making the highlight plays, but uh, <laughs> I think Tim is. I, Tim's KD right now is nuts. Yeah, like, we te like I was saying, man, Tim definitely is a really strong slayer. And when he kind of is like handed this. Uh, I don't want to be disrespectful, but it's, you know, when someone picks up a low seeded team and just kind of hands it to him and it's like, here you go. He's going to get a KD like 11 and 2. That's just going to happen. So, <laughs> But. Again, back to, to, to Kelp Dome. So uh, we saw Kelp Dome earlier in the tournament. We saw how the Ten Attack moved to the right and contained uh, from, from Josh on Get Kraken. And we saw how his teammates kind of held off the left side. So just based on how this map usually goes and we're watching Power's perspective, we're going to see him take that left side, hold off uh, while, his, uh, while his teammates kind of funnel targets towards Power. So if you're looking for some sniper high highlights, it's probably going to happen on this map as if the whole rest of it hadn't been a highlight to begin with. Uh, but I think, no, I think you're absolutely right here. I think uh, the combination of the Zimmy and the T-Tech is going to be able to put a lot of pressure there. I think uh, as soon as as soon as soon they're able to move uh, Pengit on that Dynamo into a position there in the center where he can just kind of have free reign, Power is actually going to get to move pretty much anywhere he wants and line up a bunch of highlight reel shots. So I'm excited. Um, let's see. Let's hope this is a little bit closer than the last match we watched on Kelp Dome. Yeah, I, now, just uh, basing the basing what I'm about to say off of the pit game, where the enemy team game game potential was able to get some... They were able to see the light of day a little bit because they were having people sneak out. Uh, this Compared to Walleye Warehouse, this map, Kelp Dome, is definitely a map where you can sneak someone into map, to the middle of the map and start painting and forcing the enemy team set up to be completely broken. But not if you just murder everything like that. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, calm down, Power. Well, they have the number one seed for a reason. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> uh, <that'd> be... <laughs> Power, no! <laughs> is it aimbot? Can we can we get this checked? Like, what's the legality of aimbots? Not at all. Sir, I think he's cheating. Yeah, something like that. Okay, and they're <laughs> oh, just nope. Took damage. Okay, that's the first <laughs> damage. Right now, they're just honestly. Right now, they're just not able to get anything started because as soon as they move around, they die. <laughs> that's like you said. He'd be holding down the left, and that left is more blue than it is orange. 
Something I would like to see at a game potential to kind of force power out of the spot is to get into positions behind all this cover and throw bombs. Uh, snipers, especially ones that are walking up on these grates all slow at a run speed, are going to have to respect bombs and move back. Pretty much the way snipers work, you have to make them miss and you have to make them get out of position. And then they're almost a deficit for the team because you kind of make your enemy team have a man down without actually killing anyone. But none of that's been happening with power. The, the targets that power have been sh has been shooting have been just kind of seemingly unaware of Power's presence. There's been no hitboxes going towards Power. He, he took damage one time, and that 10 attack that just died tried to shoot the Power. But, oh, oh, here's a Kraken flying. It's all a little movement, a little move. And of course, instead of running away, Power's going to sit here and try to take on a short range one. <laughs> Maybe a little bit ballsy. I think that a teammate could come and help power at this point. He goes in and puts down the Echo. Uh, Dynamo coming from the right. He's going to push him up to the left, and that player's probably going to die. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's just that's just a vintage power thing. Yeah, well, they moved power, to be fair, but they didn't really get anything off of it. His power hits shot. another shot on a player I didn't even see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is... I mean, this is just good players playing well. Like... <laughs> They're moving into the spot, but they're just winning all these 1v1s. I don't even want to know what Tim's been doing this whole time. Oh, power finally goes down, but he still got the kill. Devin is cheering. <laughs> Devin is cheering right now. All right, so last 30 seconds. Yes. What, what what can happen? What can happen wrong? So, uh, remember, if that person to the left actually makes it through and gets some kills, he could be an issue. Everyone on... Uh, Undeadbeat seems to be over to the left, and whoever's to the right just died. So, in theory, uh, game potential could make a huge right side push, but doesn't seem to be happening. Players getting cleaned up. No. Power didn't have to move out of position. Echoes down. No one can be sneaky right now. I think this is going to be it. Oh yeah, absolutely. This has been, this has been absolutely just in, absolute insanity. Power not able to get this final kill. Maybe yeah, it oh, doesn't matter. No, not quite. Um, yeah. To anyone who is watching Splatoon for the first time, this is top level play. This is, like, if you want to model your game around a sniper, just look at what Power did there. Look at how he held his position. Look how he just hit shot after shot, eight and one. I mean, just look at the way that this team is playing. Uh, just, this is the team to watch in this tournament. They are the one seed that is dead beat, making that look clean, making it look simple. Just awesome. No, I mean, awesome it, it, is, it is early bracket, so the, the high seeded teams aren't quite fitting each other yet. Uh, so I don't know if I would use the word the, the word high level play that of course well dead that, beat. well this team yeah. made this team made it a couple rounds through the tournament so they're definitely not yeah. bad but it's the number one seed we're talking about here so right. uh but we, we definitely saw a well practiced uh well versed sniper with really good positioning with teammates that were covering his angles and just letting him go off uh, including high KDs coming from his teammates as well I mean like they're the really good players they're very dominant and unlike also something to keep in mind Unlike a lot of the teams that are in this tournament, Deadbeats is, except for Will, who isn't on the roster because he's from Europe, except for Will, they're all from America. So they really didn't have to make any changes for this tournament. All they had to do was practice turf war. They didn't yeah. have to think anything else of it. Well, a lot of the teams, uh, not all of them, there are, there are plenty of uh, especially higher seed teams that are mostly American and were able to kind of piece together a roster. But Deadbeats didn't even have to blink an eye. They just... All they had to do was just improve better than they already were. While they're already one of the best teams, just in the West in general, I think they're definitely the best American team. So yeah, let's. Uh, I mean, this is this has been for those of you unaware. This has been our full cast for today. Um, all the teams now uh, have moved on to top sixteen. Top sixteen will be next week. Uh, so once again. Uh, this is the U.S. Inkling Open, hosted by Battlefy and casted by Ink TV. Um, Hitzel, you want to run them one more time by the sweet, sweet prizes that these teams are competing for? <laughs> yeah, sure. So the team that comes in first place is going to get a trip to E3, a team trip to E3. So everybody's going to be able to hang out with everybody in person. I know that Pangit has gone to one Splatoon land. Uh, I teamed with him. It was awesome. We had a lot of fun. Now he's going to be able to do it with his actual teammates and not just the pickup squad that we made. Uh, and... They're also going to win Nintendo Switches and copies of Splatoon 2. In addition, teams that make it close to the top but don't quite get there, there's plenty of swag for them too. Uh, there are Splatoon-related prizes, uh, figurines, artwork, all kinds of cool stuff for the rooms to go along with the, you know, the Splatoon 2, you know, maybe your Amiibos and stuff. I'm pretty sure they have like, some pretty interesting-looking nerd caves with all this uh, Splatoon swag. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's um, there's definitely prizes um, for the teams that are going to do well. 
Next week, we are going to come back for more rounds. Uh, we did three rounds today. There are, uh, I think, four or five rounds remaining in the tournament, and these are going to yeah. be teams that are higher seeded uh, fighting each other. So we definitely got to see some of the high seeded teams um, do what they do versus right, lower seed teams. And then later, we're going to uh, we're, go we're going to see some higher level play. And additionally, beyond that, uh, if you didn't really like Tier 4, you want to see something else, uh, next week we'll feature every single mode, every single competitive mode of Splatoon will be on uh, display next week. So, you know, if you like the Tier 4, if you wanted to watch a little bit more, you wanted to hear these other modes we were talking about, uh, tune in next week. You'll see the same stuff with the same high-level quality. And um, I believe now, uh, you uh, this seems kind of redundant because you just watched a uh, Power Highlight video that was uh, <laughs> uh, disguised as a match. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and show you... <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and show you that uh, that power spotlight once again, just so you can see just how awesome uh, power is and how great it is. Yep. And uh, one more time, this has been uh, Nine Whole Grains, and joining me in the mic has been the one and only Hitzel. Hi, I am the Hitzel. I mean, the bye. one and only Hitzel eighty nine. So yeah, have a great time. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week.